Tell me change that much. 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 I'm the only major candidate who opposed this war. Tell me change that much. And as president, tell me change that much. Tell me change that much. I will cut tens of billions of dollars in wasteful spending. Tell me change that much. I will cut investments in unproven missile defense systems. I will not weaponize space. I will slow our development of future combat systems. And I will institute an independent. Defense Priorities Board to ensure that the quadrennial defense review is not used to justify unnecessary spending. Third, I will set a goal of a world without nuclear weapons. To seek that goal, I will not develop new nuclear weapons. I will seek a global ban on the production of fissile material, and I will negotiate with Russia to take our ICBMs off air trigger alert and to achieve deep cuts in our nuclear arsenals. That's just how white folks will do you. It wasn't merely the cruelty involved. I was learning that black people could be mean and then something. It was a particular brand of arrogance, an obtuseness in otherwise sane people that brought forth our bitter laughter. It was as if whites didn't know they were being cruel in the first place, or at least thought you deserving of their scorn. White folks. White folks. White folks. Uh, I don't think MSNBC. Uh, I don't think MSNBC. Uh, I don't think MSNBC. Uh, I don't think MSNBC should be carrying uh, the kinds of uh, hateful remarks that uh, I must uttered the other day. Ray assured me that he would never talk about whites as whites in front of whites without knowing exactly what we were doing, without knowing that there might be a price to pay. No, no, no. Showing your husband is trailing Hillary 46% and 37% in the African American community. What's going on here? Uh, first of all, I think that that's not going to hold. I'm completely confident. Black America will wake up. <laughs> Our rage at the white world needed no object, he seemed to be telling me. No independent confirmation. It could be switched on and off at our pleasure. And yet, even as I imagined myself following Malcolm's call, one line in the book stayed with me. He spoke of a wish he'd once had, the wish that the white blood that ran through him, there by an act of violence, might somehow be expunged. A black value system, it said. At the top of the list was a commitment to God, who will give us the strength to give up prayerful pacifism and become black Christian activists, soldiers for black freedom and the dignity of all humankind. The party that has the strongest suit when it comes to security issues benefits when there's stress, when there's a threat. We had a recording come out of the Obama headquarters. No, no, no. Not Obama. I'm sorry. Man, Bin Laden. I know what you mean. Bin October, Laden. I think it was October 30th. It came out of Bin Laden's headquarters over there in Pakistan or whatever. Right in the, the election. Right. And people believe that that did help help uh, uh, Bush get reelected. Right. Right? In, 19, in, in 2006. Well, so, so it is a reasonable assumption. Bush. That hate hadn't gone away. It formed a counter-narrative, very deep within each person, and at the center of which stood white people, some cruel, some ignorant, sometimes a single face, sometimes just a faceless image of a system claiming power over our lives. I can no more disown him than I can disown my white grandmother, a woman who helped raise me, a woman who sacrificed again and again for me, a woman who loves me as much as she loves anything in this world, but a woman who once confessed for fear of black men who passed her by on the street. I took her into the other room and asked her what had happened. A man asked me for money yesterday while I was waiting for the bus. That's all? Her lips pursed with irritation. He was very aggressive, Barry. Very aggressive. I gave him a dollar and he kept asking. If the bus hadn't come, I think he might have hit me over the head. Not that my grandmother uh, harbors any racial animosity. She doesn't. particular passage, though, in Trinity's brochure that stood out. A commandment more self-conscious in its tone, requiring greater elaboration. A disavowal of the pursuit of middle-classness, the heading read. 
fact is this world, a world where cruise ships throw away more food in a day than most residents of Port-au-Prince see in a year, where white folks' greed runs the world in need, apartheid in one hemisphere, apathy in another hemisphere, that's the world on which hope sits. Did you know that he had made these statements before the videotape appeared? You know, frankly, I didn't. Uh, I, I wasn't in church during uh, the time that these statements were made. There is a man here who can take this country in a new direction. And so it went. A meditation on a fallen world. While the boys next to me doodled on their church bulletin. Reverend Wright spoke of Sharpsville and Hiroshima. The callousness of policymakers in the White House and in the State House. We bombed Hiroshima, we bombed Nagasaki, and we nuked far more than the thousands in New York and the Pentagon, and we never batted in eye. Most of the time, when I'm in church, he's talking about Jesus, God, faith, values. The book teaches me things, I said, about white people. I mean. See, the book's not really about Africa. Or black people. It's about the man who wrote it. The European, the American, a particular way of looking at the world. If you can keep your distance, it's all there in what's said and what's left unsaid. So I read the book to help me understand what it is that makes white people so afraid. Their demons. The way ideas get twisted around. It helps me understand how people learn to hate. Black politicians less gifted than Harold discovered what white politicians have known for a very long time. The race baiting could make up for a host of limitations. A steady attack on the white race, the constant recitation of black people's brutal experience in this country, served as the ballast that could prevent the ideas of personal and communal responsibility from tipping into an ocean of despair. Yes, the nationalists would say, whites are responsible for your sorry state, not any inherent flaws in you.